Rearm Tana brings Arcane Nostrand as the inedible Arcane Bow to all of the bow units and this video is going to be the best users of it and the builds that you can run with it. Of course you should be giving this to your favorite units but if you have multiple favorites then this video can help you decide and also give you ideas on the builds that you can run with this weapon. So Arcane Nostrand is a 14 might Arcane Bow that is going to be inedible to bows of all colors and this does give you minus on special cooldown and plus 5 to all of your stats in the combat if you initiate combat or if you are within 2 spaces of an ally. You also get the guaranteed follow up attack and 30% damage reduction from foe's first attack. And then finally you can get even more attack in the combat depending on the foe's maximum special cooldown count times 2 which is then subtracted by 12. So this can definitely help you against many of the uh, low cooldown special enemies so that you can get extra attack against them. So the lower the special of the enemy the more attack we are going to be getting. So that is definitely pretty good. And overall this weapon is pretty decent but I wouldn't really say it's too insane because bows already have some nice inedible options in white cap bow plus which is going to be useful for many of the fast bow units which are frail and just want to function in the player phase and there's also wyvern yumi plus which is going to be useful for the enemy phase bow units so arcane nostrand is a pretty nice mixed phase option that can be useful on many of the bow units and if you don't really want to run a unit just for the player phase with the white cap bow plus then this is definitely going to be an option. The bow armors are definitely amazing users of this because they don't really have the player phase to run white cap bow plus and if they're slow like winter and net then they do appreciate the guaranteed follow up attack as they can just run something else in their slot B like special fighter for example. So here you can see winter and net and valentine Faye having pretty similar stats spread overall. Winter and net is going to be better because of being the new unit and having more BST and then we have got winter ignats and winter felix that are also really good bow units who can make use of this because of being fast. So because of being fast they are going to be able to use savvy fighter and stack up the damage reduction and definitely make good use out of the arcane bow. And then in tier 2 we do have some other older armor units like Plagian Raphael and Halloween Jacob and also Halloween Niles. And Winter Marth already got such an amazing weapon refined so he doesn't really need this kind of arcane bow. On a slow unit like Winter and Net, you can pretty much just run a unity skill and run special fighter and get the healing out of it as well as the guard effect and the special charges and you can actually inherit all of the premium skills at the same time from Rearm Tana which is really good so you can actually get Deadeye at the same time and you can retaliate back with Deadeye because it is going to be a 2 cooldown special with the arcane bow. So on a slower unit you can definitely run a special fighter build and you can also run Savvy Fighter if you're going to be running this on Winter Ignatz or Winter Felix because Savvy Fighter does provide you with 30% damage reduction and the full null follow up. So the damage reduction is going to be stacking up and the full null follow up is definitely pretty amazing. And you can also run something like Distant Defense 4 on Plage and Raphael for example. So if you don't really want to run a Unity skill then you can run Distant Defense 4 and he does have pretty high attack stats so all of these bow armors can definitely make good use out of Deadeye as well. When it comes to the infantry bow units you are definitely going to be still seeing a lot of white cap bow plus because it's such a good weapon but if you want to have a more mixed phase option and if you have decent bulk then this can be a pretty nice weapon that you can run on these units and Kiragi and Etie are definitely going to be leading the way as the modern options. Kiragi having a pretty good mix of the defense and speed which is really good and having more speed is really nice with this kind of weapon because you're going to be closing the gap between the damage reduction skills that scale off the speed and you're also going to be able to pretty much make use of the guaranteed follow-up attack as a pseudo half null follow-up. So you can bypass the follow-up negation effects pretty easily by being fast and Kiragi does have pretty good defense to make use of this and Etie actually has pretty good attack stat. So attack is definitely pretty important for bow units because shredding through the damage reduction is going to be only possible with Deadeye and Deadeye does scale off based on the damage that you do. So it is a bit similar to Glimmer in that way and having high attack stat is definitely pretty important so that you can have more damage output by using Dead Eye. So Etie is definitely not lacking in that regard having that 51 attack. Dancer Nefni is definitely a pretty unique option and she's still going to be having access to the dance skill so that's why she is going to be here because having a dancer with the arcane weapon is definitely really good and these vanilla dance skills are allowed with the arcane weapons. You can normally have, you know, preferred dance skills like Sweet Dreams for example which New York Plumeria has got with the Arcane Weapon. You can also see a couple of other uh, bow fighters here like Ninja Shinon 
and regular version of Shinon and also Pirate Bridget. So all of these units do have good enough speed and also good enough attack and they do have decent enough, you know, bulk that they are not going to be frail. None of the tier 1 archers are really frail for that matter. Um, but definitely the frailty begins with tier 2 with Louise. And we also have Nier Anna here. Joshua is going to be pretty decent, who is going to be fast enough and is going to be having decent enough bulk. And we also have Nina. And we also have Ronan here, who doesn't really have the highest defense. But still the damage reduction is definitely helpful. And then we've got a couple of resplendent bow units in Takumi, Ines and George. And also some bulky archers like George, Gordon, Leon and Corin. So the bulky archers are definitely going to be enjoying this because they can get the guaranteed follow-up attack and also get the damage reduction and pretty much not have to rely on speed stacking or trying to run quicker posts to get the follow-up attack. So these units are going to be in tier 2. They're not really the tier 1 material but and the difference between tier 2 and tier 3 isn't really all that big in my opinion. So we do have Faye and Brattle Cordelia here, Klein and Fallen Takumi and also Clarice, Noir. So like I said the gap between tier 3 and tier 2 isn't really all that big. It's just that the, the tier 2 units are going to be slightly better and obviously the tier 1 units. And in tier 4 we do have units who don't really have the highest attack stat in Summer Gaia, Setsuna, Rebecca and also Niles who does have the lowest attack stat out of any kind of bow infantry unit. Having low attack is not the greatest for Deadeye but still these units are going to be functional with some other specials and it's not like they're bad units it's just that the units above them kind of outstab them. So these are the bow infantry units which I have on my tier list. And we already have a couple of units which are going to be in the pipeline for the refine like Gren and also Tanya, Midori and Eleonora. So all of these units I do believe are going to be getting a weapon refine in a year. And if you do use them a lot then you can still give them the arcane bow but if you're trying to optimize and wait until their weapon refine then it, you know it's something you can watch out for and pretty much save the opportunity cost. The fast infantry archers are definitely going to be appreciating Deadeye, the Arcane Bow and the Unity skill at the same time. So you can easily run that and also run this with no follow up attack speed oath 4 like the first build which I've shown with ETA and you can also run attack speed finish 4 and speed defense tempo is available and divine codes 4 so it's a lot more accessible and for a mixed phase build speed smoke 4 can work out so someone like Kiragi can definitely get the damage reduction out of the arcane bow and also stack up the damage reduction with speed smoke 4 and remote sparrow is also a pretty nice option with the arcane bow for the player phase because the damage reduction of the Remote Sparrow and the Arcane Bow is going to be stacking up for 51% damage reduction which is definitely pretty good for the survival and then you can easily trigger Deadeye on your double and that's why the tempo skill can definitely be pretty helpful in the slot B. So the slot B is going to be rather flexible for many of these units and slot C is going to be either having attack speed oath 4 or something offensive like that and you can also run this on slower units like Gordon and Faye for example with special spiral 4 and a damaging special like bonfire or iceberg that can scale off their bulk. So that is going to be doing a lot more damage and you can still shred through the damage reduction and you can just run attack defense unity on someone like Gordon and wait for the attack defense finish. And for Faye she already has access to the finish kill and you can actually run attack smoke 4 here because you do get the guaranteed follow up attack from the arcane bow but not really the follow up negation. So Follow-up negation could be obtained with the Tax Smoke 4 and then you can even run a 2 cooldown special like Ruptured Sky, Glimmer or Moonbow and pretty much always have it charged up with Time Pulse 4. So that's also an option especially if you want to use a finish kill and consistently trigger its effect. There are not too many bow flyers that need this kind of arcane bow but still there are a decent amount of them and Springy Nigo is definitely going to be tier 1 because of his offenses and Bridal Shana is an interesting case because she can get the true damage out of her weapon but she's basically going to be trading that for minus one special cooldown and better survivability with the damage reduction and basically being able to trigger Deadeye on her double attack and she's also going to be able to get the extra damage by getting the extra attack out of the arcane weapon it's not exactly true damage but she can still make use of the arcane bow if you're trying to switch up things and dancer Quan is going to be the standout option here because of being a dancer Unlike Nier Plumeria, he's not going to be losing out on his dance skill um, and vanilla dance skills are allowed and then we have got Ninja Heath who does have pretty good physical bulk and also the magical bulk which is not really all that common for any of these bow flyers and Summer Lindsay in my opinion is like tier 2 when it comes to the bow flyers so a lot of times she's still going to be preferring having the white cap bow plus build but 
If you just want to mix things up and want to have a more mixed phase option, then the Arcane Bow is going to be an option. Then we've got New York Fearm, Summer Takumi, and Spring Loki, who have pretty similar speed stats, and Loki especially does not have a very high attack stat compared to a lot of these bow flyers. A lot of the bow flyers already have pretty good weapons, but they're still going to be loving the Guidance 4, which they can get out of Rearm Tana, and so are these bow flyers, which already are going to be inheriting Deadeye, I believe, attack speed unity, and the Arcane Bow itself. Remote Sparrow damage reduction stacking is something that you can take advantage of on many of these bow flyers and you can also do that on Summer Alencia but if not then you can just run attack speed catch 4 on her and for someone like Spring Loki who wants to be a bit of a bulky fast bow flyer she can definitely try and run a bit different build with Mystic Boost 4 and attack speed hold and a bulky bow flyer like Ninja Heath can definitely run the unity skill because attack and defense are definitely two of his most important stats and then you can just run the Fautre skill and the hold skill. So the skill options are not really too different for a lot of these bow flyers. Basically a cat skill, a unity skill, or you can just run the attack speed unity that you get out of uh, Rearm Tana. And then a Fautre skill and just the hold or the rain skill in the slot C. For the bow cavaliers, this weapon can be a bit of an odd option at times because it does have the requirement for the enemy phase to be within two spaces of an ally. And a lot of times bow units might be away from their allies but still you can try and maintain the condition of this weapon. So in tier 1 I would have Summer Leone and Sedgar from the free to play pool and also Spring Henry who is definitely a pretty unique option because of his defense. And in tier 2 we do have Resplendent Brave Lin now who can definitely appreciate the arcane bow much more than the Mulligir. And she will have to give up Sake's blessing but it's not really that big of a trade off. Sue also didn't really get the most insane weapon refined so she can also run this weapon. And then we also have Summer Wolt and also Python. Python also didn't get a, you know, very insane weapon refine and a lot of people are going to be running this arcane uh, bow on him, especially because he actually has a defense, so he can definitely be pretty bulky with the damage reduction. Then we've got Valentine Roy, who can also function as a defensive cavalier, being pretty unique as well. And then and then in tier 3, finally, we have got Bridal Louise and Halloween Rolf, who kind of get outstatted by the units above them. And they don't really have the highest base attack, so they do find themselves here. And we are probably going to be getting a weapon refine for Bernadetta and Wrath in a year. I am a really big Wrath fan. I do have him at plus and merge, and I'm personally going to be looking out for the weapon refine first before giving him the arcane uh, bow. So you can definitely try and wait for the weapon refine. But if you're really impatient, then uh, arcane bow is definitely right there on Rearm Tana. Just like the bow flyers, the builds don't really change too much for the bow cavaliers either. You're going to be running the cat skill or you can just run attack speed unity which you get from Rearm Tana. And you can run the Fautre skill. And you can also run speed smoke 4 actually in the case of Leone who does have more defense than someone like Brave Lin. So that can work out. But a lot of times you're going to be seeing attack speed menace being run in the slot C. And again, remote sparrow damage reduction stacking is something you can do. And on a bulky bow cavalier like Henry, he can stack the damage reduction with the guard for actually and get the guard in both phases and can function in both phases as a bulky bow cavalier. So this is going to be my final full arcane Nastrond tier list at the end with all of these bow units. So a lot of them are definitely going to be appreciating the mixed phase aspect of this and the damage reduction you can get out of it. But a lot of times people are just going to be sticking to white cap bow plus. And if I had to filter this tier list a bit more with the free to play options, then here are all of the free to play options from the tier list. And we definitely have a good amount of free to play units here and also a good amount of premium units if you do, you know, filter them out. So I hope you all did enjoy this tier list video for the Arcane Bow. Make sure to share this video with your friends if they're trying to build up any of these units with the Arcane Bow or are just pulling on this banner. And if you did enjoy it, then please be sure to leave a like and a comment it helps you tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using super thanks down below or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more fave videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as damage reduction against Deadeye. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.